unfortunately, uh, you know, we see this sometimes at the at the very end when you lose those bases that were so critical to uh, uh, to securing victory, where you you might have had a chance to come back and you lose one or two of them at a time. It really takes the wind out of the sails. I, I don't know how much uh, uh, morale there is left for the the VS. They might just be saying, you know what, hey, we're not going to be able to take the territory back. Uh, let's just go find ourselves a good fight and uh, and finish this off here. It looks like Fair Northern Barracks is going to fall to the to the NC, even though it's an even pop fight. That's 22 seconds left. I'm going to head up to Aurora Materials Lab. I'm also at the exact same location. Freya Northern looks as though it's going to go through. I might just make sure that, that I'm just going to go check to see what's going on over there just to see if it does go through. And if it does, I think the last facility of major battle that we'll see here today will be Aurora Materials. The facility is secure. Excellent Actually, work. hang on a second. The point at Freya Northern is flipping, but there is an NC Galaxy currently hovering over it to make sure, in fact, not the Vanu force on it was just not strong enough, and that is going to go through for the NC. Also done by Juggernaut. Juggernaut are cleaning up this northern section of the map here. Tons and tons and tons of VS pouring into our materials, coming out of the teleporter, pushing to the small stairs. They are going to be three scat maxes. Three <laughs> very angry scat maxes at the top of those stairs. We're going to see. I've seen. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I've seen three angry scat maxes versus a herd of crabs. Let's see how this goes. And. Are those Zoe crabs? Those they are Zoe's. Zoe crabs. Wow. Hey. Honestly, there's too much dubstep in that room for me to handle I, right now. Wow. I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Zoe Maxes pulled in Server Smash. That might have, if that was a Zoe Max, I think that is the first one I've ever seen pulled here. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, with the, with the proposed changes coming to the Zoe Max soon, I, I, for, for a situation that close quarters, I, I honestly would not be surprised. Maybe maybe they were confused. Maybe they thought the changes had already happened. That's why they pulled it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they read uh, Jaeger instead of PTS changes. Yes, yes. But massive, massive uh, Max crash in the VS. Uh, clears all the way to the Banana Building and looks like they're probably going to clear this out here. Uh, I, I can look for a a, a a counter crash here from the ANC, but I just I hold the phone. We have an RSNC Galaxy coming in, moving straight towards uh, the point room here. He's coming in really hot. This could result in a lot of light assaults with C4. They have dropped. One beacon on roof. Yeah. And interestingly, the VS have all pushed out of the point room. These NC are going to be able to drop right down and have absolutely no one guarding the point. And with the Sunders that are, the, sun, the NC Sunders that have sort of built up here, this could actually result in a, a sort of a, 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 back, a, a successful backup on a smaller scale here to the point where the NC is just going to be able to pins the Vanu out of this, uh, out of this small Icy area. Mountain Pass uh, looks like it has a hold going on from the VS right now. I'm heading over there. Let me know how uh, if they manage to get back on the point there. Definitely. In fact, they have uh, NC are just moving on back onto Aurora Materials now. They're meeting a quite a considerable amount of resistance by Vanu, but with the reinforcements coming from NC, it looks as though this seven is minutes a, remaining. Seven a minutes long, remaining in the match. A long-winded uh, fight. So with seven minutes remaining, it means no large facilities can cap. By the way, uh, uh, Ice Mountain Pass was massively resecured by Scat Maxes here. So even if they had connection to Ice Mountain uh, to Ice Tech Plant, that would not be in contention. It would not be something that uh, uh, could happen right now. There are no seven-minute point bases. Um, I'm sorry, that's not true. Sierra Listening Post, I guess, is technically uh, something that could be capped right now, but it is out of contention. So the only stuff that is possible to be capped are these four-minute bases. Um, that includes Ymir Biolab which is back under contention again. Uh, that includes uh, Aurora Materials Lab and Rhyme Analytics, uh, Crystal Ridge Commerce, Freya, things like that. Freya Geothermal. It looks like the VS have, have resecured for, uh, Ymir yet again. I'm going to head back to Aurora Materials. Unfo the VS unfortunately left. This is, uh, you know, the VS are not staying around to to finish off things, unfortunately, or the NC are just being incredibly lucky or uh, or wise as to when they're bringing their forces back after the VS have killed everything else off. Uh, I'm minutes, just looking... Two minutes remaining on the cap here. 
a whole slew of Sunderers back, even though they had just... I mean, literally, it's like nothing ever happened here. These things were all dead with tank mines and scat maxes around, or, and uh, VS maxes around them just moments ago, and it's like nothing ever even happened here. Yeah. I'm just looking at the uh, center of the map now. Waterson's Redemption is now under VS Ghost Cap, and the Isa Mountain Pass situation really does bring me a sense of deja vu as to what happened in the Briggs versus Emerald Smash, where that was the final base that kind of won the day, or it was kind of the base that sort of uh, brought the the deciding factor of that match. Ninety seconds left on Aurora Materials Lab, and. They are definitely, the, the NC have moved off the point, they are trying to spawn contain, and they have, do not have anyone watching the small stairs, and here comes the crabs. More so than Maxis yet again. Oh my god. It's only one this time, it looks like. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, I've lost count. Is it, is it oh my, I just saw That was a huge C4. Three Maxis go down to C4, that guy has had a heel, hell of a feed right there. They still don't have the point back yet. And despite that crash, the NC is still capping it back. It's because the only thing left out here are uh, the maxes. Uh, are maxes. It's too many maxes. They're slowly not enough, going uh, down. Not enough grunts. Finally, here comes the heavies. Is it too little, too late though? It does look as though they're going to be able to. Push back on effectively. Four minutes remaining. Four minutes not remaining. Not enough to see uh, so in that point, but it doesn't matter. Remaining, the only bases that are still under contention and able to be captured are Raw Materials Lab, Ymir Biolab for about a minute remaining, Watterson's Redemption, which looks like it was resecured um, by was, the NC. Yep. And that's about it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Haven Outpost just started capping. It might. And I yeah, there's it a might. Actually, no, you know what, I'm looking, I'm looking at my timer, and uh, the timer of Haven Outpost is 346, the timer on mine is 334, so Haven Outpost, I do not believe, can cap in time. Oh, man, it's so close, so the NC just tried to snatch a little bit of territory off, but they really don't need it. With 58 to 41, this may be, I'm pretty sure it's fairly definitive as to what the result's going to be today. Well, and I, I think they're trying to go for an even 60, honestly. <laughs> just, just for a little bit of a extra salt on the wound there. And there's another big push at Ymir. Why don't you head down to Ymir? I'm going to head over to Haven Outpost and see if anyone comes to actually try and resecure this. They have three minutes to do so, and certainly you would think that uh, even though I, it doesn't look like it's going to cap in time, I'm wondering if uh, just the panic of it's it's falling right now and we don't want to lose any more will happen and the VS will spawn in there. The objects currently were still rendering in for the bio and all I could see was just a bunch of hovering people all through the bloody region it was just it kind of presented at the scale as to how many people are in this bio lab right now but from what i can tell the vanu have once again poured massive amounts of numbers into here to the point where the vs the nc sorry have just been pushed straight back out I, it, it does make me kind of feel sorry for the poor guys on the nc who got stuck here for the entire two hours because this would have been a hell of a grind Not as large of a resecure as I as I kind of wondered. In fact, what it looks like, and uh, it's something I want to ask the VS about, it looks like they have small resecure squads, uh, six people going around in Valkyries. Uh, they sent six people to Haven Outpost in a Valkyrie uh, and dropped on the point and uh, and took it back. It's an interesting tactic. It is, and something that we don't, uh, that I personally have seen uh, in service smashes uh, ever is the use of Valkyries at least for long-term, uh, fast response squads. So it, it's kind of a question as to how effective that tactic really is. Valkyries do... Oh, okay, so the NC are back at uh, Aurora Materials Lab. If they can get on the point quickly here, and they are coming in force. This is They, they understand this is the only place they're going to be able to cap. They have crashed multiple galaxies on here. They have Sunders back up. The VS are going to have to make one final stand at this base. I'm going to have to come join you up there, considering that the biolab is officially, um, it's, it's zeroed out. There's no way that that can go in time. There's one minute remaining. It the, the VS are, have a single max and a heavy assault who are holding out desperately. We're going to see what the timer says when the NC take this point. 2.47. Unfortunately, this will not cap in time. We have under a minute remaining in this match, and I don't believe anything is going to fall. 
nothing is going to fall in time. That is, the, so as the map stands, that is going to be the, the results for today's match. Yes, 58 to 41, the NC uh, with a, a quite convincing victory. It was very close for uh, uh, probably the first two-thirds of the match, and then the NC managed to get some really crucial base captures. They were the final ones who managed to capture Frey Ramp and, and, and move out and secure it. And uh, so, yeah, congratulations to the NC. That was incredible, and I'm definitely going to see a lot on the Briggs Reddit saying that the Briggs NC remains undefeated, no doubt, knowing, knowing the nature of the server and the Reddit. Unfortunately, nobody will be able to find out who's eating is bigger. <laughs> it's pretty much the case, yeah. So Match was... over. Match over. NC are victorious with 58% to the VS's 41%. Congratulations, Squizzy and all NC forces. Repeat, NC are the victors. All right. So I'm going to head over to the tech plant and get a little shot here, and then uh, I'm going to see if we can get the force commanders and perhaps platoon leaders to come to the interview channel. So if you can go round those people up, uh, Kamikaze, and then... All right, um, I'll definitely... In fact, I'll, um, I'll get Scott to do an all call. Okay. I'll be right back. got a bit of a dead time here. <clears throat> I want to apologize to everybody on the stream who were looking for the stats today. As you can probably tell I'm pretty uh, pretty not well. So um, they will be available tomorrow if you're watching the match on, uh, on the Cobalt match. But unfortunately today I wasn't up to be able to, uh, wasn't awake to be able to set up the stats unfortunately. So apologies to uh, everybody who was expecting that today and to the casters. All right, let me make sure we can set this up here, and then we'll head down to the interview channel. I've just given Scott a poke. He was, in fact, there he is now. He's actually already dragged up the two force commanders. I'll quickly go ask him to get, bring up the platoon commanders as well. I can't actually move down to interview channel. There we go, cheers. That uh, Squizzy is the NC platoon leader, Nocturnal Garnet, sorry, is the NC force commander, Nocturnal Garnet is the VS force commander. I'm just getting the platoon leaders now. Actually, Squiz, knock, use your whispers to get them up here. Working yep, on it. Do you want all the platoon leads? That was a hell of a match, guys, by the way. Well done. Good, well played. Yes, we do. Well, in actual fact, when we were organising for the Cobalt, the lead for the NC Harasser team, because both sides had equal number of Harassers running, because the Harasser squad actually spoke with Squizzy, who was our... Um, oh, by the way, we've got no permissions for our opportunities to join this channel. Um, just put that out. But, um, basically for the Cobalt Smash, the lead for the NC Harasser team was talking to Squizzy, who was our first choice FC, about running a Harasser squad. That's where that came from. But we basically use them as a way of taking out ground vehicles and basically running across the entire map. It certainly felt like they were quite effective in doing so. It was it was certainly noticeable, and uh, near the end there, it seemed like the NC were kind of getting sick and tired of it, and they pulled their own harassers. And you guys seem to be in a little uh, a little Cold War race of who can have the most harass. We start out it was three versus three, and then I saw five. And yeah, at the at the end of the st what do we count like seven versus seven harassers at one point? Uh, yeah, I saw I saw six from the VS at one point. Holy moly! 
Briggs wins. Yeah, I, Fucking undefeated. I just have much to do with the harassers. I pretty much left that up to Ashes, who was leading the harassers squad. He has one that's sort of... I, I asked him to be in certain places when I wanted them there, but other than that, Ashes was pretty much running them for my side. Yeah. Um, now with the harassers, we're just mainly trying to take on the enemy armor that was coming around, um, particularly other harasser squad that the NC um, had up. Um, it was, yeah, it was actually quite good fun. Um, good chance to try out a few different things that I haven't been able to try out before. Um, and it was a little bit, little bit hard a few times, just would, would often pull... Um, anti ear because there was quite a strong NC air presence around and then all of a sudden we get hit by a group of harassers and then would switch back to anti vehicle and we get hit by a bunch of air again so a few times it was um, scrambling around trying to trying to um, get ourselves sorted and organized with that but overall it was, it was quite good fun Uh, well, if you have any um, questions you'd like to ask the people here, just feel free to th throw them over to me if you want. Yep, all good. Um, something I want to ask the force commanders actually is, uh, during this, uh, during the whole event, what was the turning point of the battle for you guys? Like, where did you feel as though, like, oh dear, we need to sort of uh, take take X base here, or we've taken this base, and it was it was sort of the turning point. Which was the, what was the turning point of the battle for you guys? Would it be Squizzy or Nocturnal answer first? Um, I'll, I'll answer first, I guess. Um, we lost Freya Amp pretty early into the alert, and um, <clears throat> that was kind of a lodestone for, a keystone for our defensive line. Um, if they'd pushed further out of Freya Amp, we would have been in real trouble, so we had to dedicate a lot of forces to retaking that, which left, uh, left us pretty open and dry in the center hex. Um, once we retook Freya Amp, though, it was sort of a, a push and pull from then on, and it sort of tied up a lot of forces that I was hoping to utilize in other areas. So, Freya Amp Station mm. definitely brought on a sense of deja vu from the Briggs vs. Emerald Smash, where I personally remember there would be that that base would have flipped easily uh, five times in that match, and I think. Like it's the same case here. It was just it was a, it was a point of contest for the entirety of that match. So. It was definitely a fight well fought. Uh, what about you, Nocturnal? Turning yeah. point, from what I saw, um, it's a 50 50 pretty much the entire time, maybe one or two bases up or down at times. The main turning point was when we lost Faramp and Rhyme and pretty much within half a minute of each other. I had Pop at both, but just didn't manage to secure either of them, and that really put us behind because Rhyme and Lurks to start pushing on to Zero and Aurora and Faramp. while well, we took it early and allowed them to open up extra lanes and therefore push back out of the fire ramp where we'd actually done quite a bit of work in the north while we got pushed in from the south side. So yeah, yeah. We're losing Roman Freya at pretty much at the same time it really cost us dearly. Yeah, we were always, uh, during the stream, we were talking about how Freya does appear to be one of the main, uh, just the entire northern or northwest area of that map. It is so powerful if you happen to take it, and it does open up a lot of territory to you to sort of get the early advantage in the game so it, that appeared to be uh, that appeared to be enacting for the latest stages of the match um something else i want to also ask uh, to anybody who actually fought at the crystal ridge area considering that was the first time uh we've seen that base in a service match and it's it was it's a very different base in comparison to most designs. So to anyone who actually fought at Crystal Ridge, like how did you guys find fighting there for the first time in this sort of service match event? Like how did it how did it feel to you guys? Because it was it was a it was a base of high contest in the second half of the match, especially. Yeah, I I was uh, platoon lead of platoon one, and we were around Freya and Crystal Ridge the whole time. And uh, it just, every time we seemed to like, if we felt like we'd take it, they'd just come in from every fucking direction. Oh, sorry, I'm not swear. Every direction, <laughs> and would lose everything immediately, and be pushed all the way out. It was uh, certainly frustrating, but we got there eventually. Yeah, we always, we were all... Um...
Well, uh, we we first to start with, we lost a full squad. I'm not sure where they went. Um, right before the match started, and one of our squads was always on the outside lane, um, trying to push up there. Whether it was just starting ghost caps and uh, forcing them to be reinforced later, but uh, yeah, we just got everything pushed into us right at the start and had to slowly take it all back up in the north. Okay, uh, let me reiterate. Uh, Maelstrom just told me in chat how to fix why my mic wasn't working. Apparently, I was selected on TeamSpeak, so that's why you guys couldn't hear me. The question I asked was how they felt planning-wise and, and battle-wise the uh, open area of the north affected things um, and, and how it affected their planning. So I, I heard from one side if the other side could let me know what you thought. Yeah, um, we got really lucky, I think, at the start. We were actually a squad down. Um, but we managed to push in on that amp really quickly and I was a bit surprised. I, I expected more resistance um, But I think because he was trying to push both lanes simultaneously, which was a really good tactic um, And was actually what we were hoping for it, it would have You know, we just sent a squad to defend into a comma ray and then push the amp Honestly, I think the way it's set up now makes it a nice challenge Um I, I, I think that there was a couple of times where we could have had um, Solar Array and, and there was a couple of times where we could have pushed onto Snowshear. So um, if we had have got, you know, Substation and, and, and Solar Array at the same time. So I actually quite enjoyed it. Was there anything else that, that you guys noticed about... Uh, I, I assume Briggs has fought on the old Esimer map, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So uh, those of you who have fought on both maps... What are your feelings about both? Do you prefer one over the other? Do you prefer the fights you get on this one or on that one? Or, or do you feel they're, they're just two flavors and, you know, uh, one's as good as the other one? It, um, it really just, uh, oh, it really just makes, uh, you, you just got to push for, like, makes Crystal, uh, Crystal Ridge comms just as important as the amp station nearly. And uh, you got to split your forces between the two. I think from my perspective, um, just to reflect on the play on Service Mash and on Live, I think um, in both cases the tech plant's crucial and constantly drawing in fights to the centre map, which leaves your external lattice lines open. And so from a Force Commander position, you need to be able to assign your assets um, sparingly to maintain positions on external and external lattice lines. But on live, it works quite different, and you sort of gotta just lean on your on your faction mates to hope they get the job done wherever they might be. And so it's up in the air on live, but on on service smash, it's it's quite a surreal fight. It's quite interesting to go up against someone, and you can see mentally how it's developing for them and how it's unraveling for them. And then it sort of it clicks with you as a force commander, and you can sort of see where you need to go and where you need to be. And it really is like a game of chess on this map so I, I quite like it it's quite good all right well thank you guys for participating uh, uh you know i'm i'm glad that we uh have managed to incorporate briggs fully into the server smash thing and so much that uh you know i mean when we were first talking about bringing you guys on board we were concerned whether you'd even be able to field 96 and here you are i, I think the final number was 137 versus 137 so uh you know i i think That's that you started, uh, yeah. peak Peak numbers were 142 a side. Um, the lowest any side dropped to was 132. Throughout so, the whole match, it was within four or five the whole match. So, uh, congratulations, Briggs, and condolences, Briggs, uh, uh, for the loss. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> Briggs undefeated. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys uh, had a good time, and uh, we'll see you back uh, in uh, several weeks for your first actual server smash uh, of this new season. We look forward to Thank fighting you very much. Okay. I'm just glad we don't have to fight Brokers again. <laughs> Screw those guys. All right. All right, wizards. My rights. All right. So again, just to show off here, uh, it was 56 to 43. That's the final map for uh, this particular Briggs smash. 
I uh, hope you enjoyed the cast. Uh, Kamikaze, you have anything else to say here at the end? Um, just it was a it was definitely a fun match to see. Well, I found it really interesting to watch our server go against itself because we we're all a tight knit community and therefore we all tend to know each other's strategies and to see us adapt to that. It, I found it to be a very uh, very a, a diverse and interesting experience. So I thank you for allowing me to come along today. And Maelstrom, do you have any announcements before we head off here? Uh, yes. Um, the statistics system that we uh, we use, <clears throat> the public-facing version of it is very close to completion, and it's going to actually have a new addition. We're going to actually have a map, that uh, the map of the continent, not just a timeline, um, which will um, pretty much give you a very good indication of how the territories went over time. Uh, this is something still in the works. It won't be ready for this weekend, as I previously announced, but I don't want to, unlike a certain company, I don't want to uh, push out features that are not polished, so uh, I want to make sure this is fully up to speed and ready for, for public consumption. Uh, obviously, the stats today, that was my fuck up. Um, I wasn't available around or even awake to uh, to set them up, so uh, I apologise to everybody on the participants and the streamers and casters and whatnot for uh, for that as well but pretty much yeah uh keep keep an eye on reddit i will be announcing the the new section when it's live and uh yeah hope you enjoy it all right well thank you guys for watching us tomorrow at 20 utc cobalt faces itself cobalt versus cobalt smash just like this one uh, probably about the same number of people on the same continent we're testing out these new continents uh, as we go here so make sure you tune in for that 20 utc on this channel uh, that is cobalt versus cobalt thanks for watching <laughs>